So what I'm going to do is I try to get through this as fast as possible, 15, 20 minutes, and then just do Q and A, because then we can get super practical, super relevant, and you know how how does this actually apply? Um, and so I'm going to draw this up, uh, this little thing we call a cycle of fullness. But I want to explain to you kind of where it happened, how it came from. Um, <clears throat> so I've been in publishing for 11 years. Um, I started, uh, wrote my first book in 07 and then started a publishing company and have been doing it ever since. And so all my conversations every day, and I've had thousands of them, I haven't got the exact number, but I went through some databases and I think it's somewhere between four and 6,000 conversations I've had. And they always start with, well, tell me your story. And I've had those conversations with people in over 20 countries over the last 11 years, different ages, different backgrounds, different stages of life. And as people were growing and developing and, and going through life, intentionally or unintentionally, I started to notice some patterns. And after really thinking through, um, it became really definite here about two years ago, maybe, uh, give or take a couple of months, that there's really one core solid pattern that everybody's life story fits into. And it was really fascinating. And how it happened was my wife came into our business. So um, my wife and I run our business and she came in and when she started, she goes, you know, you meet somebody and then you go into a room for a couple of hours and out comes this book outline. And she's like, how does this happen? I need to know what goes on in your head. And I was like, well, good luck with that. Um, but what we ended up doing is I had my whole team together. It was about this many people. And I sat in front of a whiteboard kind of like this and for two days straight, just reverse engineered how I can say, nice to meet you, what's your name? And have a book outline in my head, just like that. Cause my brain kind of works that way. And out of that, we notice these patterns and we call it a cycle of fullness. And the more I have used this, the more I see how relevant this is in how almost every area of our life from making a business model, a ministry model, a marketing plan, a book, a parenting strategy. It's just super relevant. And um, so that's the background of how this came to be. And so I want to explain to you this cycle and we say that just as the earth works in seasons, so too our life works in cycles. And if we know, for example, the seasons of the earth, if we know the season we're in, we know what to do and how to approach that season and what to maybe expect out of that season. For example, if I really wanted to go ice fishing today, it wouldn't really work out for me, right? It's not the season for ice fishing. But if I didn't understand that, I could get really frustrated. Like, why can't I just go ice fishing? Is that so much to ask? Why God won't you let me go? You know, all those things can start to happen. But if I understand the seasons, I know when to plant, I know when to reap, I know when to harvest, I know when to sow. And I can plan on that and bank on that. And so too, our life works in these cycles. And so this concept of cycles and things coming full circle and then going outward is how we made this visual. Um, and I'll, I'll say this, these cycles are so uh, eminent and even when you're planning talking about seeds or when you're talking about businesses or when you go all the way back to Genesis. So for example, it says in, in Genesis on day one, God did this, day two, he did this, and there's this crescendo of creation, right? And if you look at it, it's like the perfect crescendo. Like he couldn't have made animals until he had first made plants. Otherwise he'd have been like, here's these animals. Oh shoot. Well, let's wipe those out and start over again. He, and it says in, in Genesis, he planted the plants. And so that was interesting to me is he didn't just go poof. There was a process there if he planted them. And so if you look, the Hebrew word for day in that in Genesis is a yam. And a yam is essentially a full cycle of something. So he made plants. They're ready to be harvested, they're ready to eat. Now he can make animals. And eventually, Adam and then Eve, the, the crescendo there. And uh, another example of that is in the New Testament to describe the time period that the Israelites were wandering through the wilderness, that 40 year time period, Paul uses a yam. And so you see that evident when the last person of that generation had to die off, even Moses himself, and then they could go through the next part. So our life works in these cycles. Sometimes a cycle lasts two weeks, sometimes it lasts 20 years. And if we understand the cycle, how it works, we can prevent it from looping around and becoming a continuous loop where we don't go outward. And so I'm going to share with you these cycles really quickly. Does that make a little bit of sense so far? Um, I want to say here is where how we identify a cycle starts. 
All spiritual transformation starts with betrayal. And betrayal I define as the loss of relationship with a person or a thing. This person was here and now they're not. I had this and now I don't. What I thought was true isn't true. And we have this loss. You see this evident in Jesus at the Last Supper, right? They're hanging out. Jesus is, I'm paraphrasing obviously. Jesus says, listen guys, somebody's going to betray me. Everybody's shocked. And then he goes, he takes the bread, he dips it, and he says, whoever eats this bread is going to betray me. And then he literally feeds it to Judas, right? And says, okay, man, go do your thing. Like, he's, that was the betrayal that kicked off the path to the cross. He's saying, this is the way it works. So we have this loss. And this loss can be intentional or unintentional. And I'll explain that a little bit later. But we have this loss. And just like this desk was moved out of this room, there's a physical space now. And that happens in our life. It's like, this is here. It's gone. There's time there. There's space there. What do I do with this? It's going to get filled. So, after this loss, we come to a point that we call an act of courage. An act of courage because I don't know what's going to happen. This happened unexpectedly or expectedly, and now I'm in a new space. I don't quite know what I'm going to do. And I act out of volition. I choose to do this. Or I act out of necessity. I don't know where I'm going, but I can't stay here type of a moment. And these are the moments that really define our life. These are the moments that my business really exists for and why I'm trying to go to as many people as possible and share this with folks because this is the kind of the make or break moments of our life. If we handle this well and we step out, we, got, we are set on a new path and we start to acquire some things that we can that equip us for the future. The first thing that we start to acquire, we call street lessons. These are lessons that we learn in the streets. Uh, I have a mentorship program for young men. It's called Warrior. Young dudes who grew up without dads. And we always tell them, listen man, you can't learn how to be a warrior at a weekend event. It doesn't work that way. You got to get beat up a little bit. And we need to be grateful for that. Um, these street lessons are lessons we learn out there in the wilderness, in the wild. It's the same wisdom that's always been, but it's unique to us now. We have a new way to kind of explain this, a new perspective on it. And it's just like when you go to a conference and you hear the same speakers essentially say the same thing in 15 different ways. And the last one comes up and you say, I haven't ever heard that before. But the 14 before said it. You've got a new way to explain this. Street lessons, and they're unique to you. I always tell people, I've seen this over and over and over. We've done, walked people through this cycle now from all over the country and three different other countries around the world, and there's always things that you think that you know. There are things that you know that you think are normal and natural for everybody, and everybody knows it, but they're not normal and natural, and everybody doesn't know it. It's your own street lessons. Then we have street skills. These are actual skills that we learn along the way where I'm not just somebody who can sit and offer you good advice and good wisdom. I can actually help you move the needle in your life. I can help you get a result that you wouldn't get had I not been in your life right now. They're street skills. Example of this is if all of us were thrown into the jungle, we would either die or become survival experts. We naturally evolve and adapt to our physical environment we find ourselves in. Right? Maybe many of you even, what, would you ever expect to be here or there has there been skills that you have adapted and naturally come from being in the position you're in now? That you look back and say, hey, going from there to here, how did that quite happen? There are things that you know how to do that you think are normal and natural and you just do them, but they're not normal and natural. And the more we can identify these, we can more intentionally speak those into other people's lives. Not from a place of pride or I'm going to show you how to do this. It's an offering. I'll explain that more later. Street skills. And then up around the bend, the last piece we have is we call divine appointments. This is simply the right person at the right time with the right word. And we don't often realize it in the moment, but as we look back, we say, had I not run into that person, I don't quite know what I would have done. Those are people that pour into us. Then there's also people that we pour into. We say, you know what? This person or this people group, I don't know why, but I want to help them. They're a, a burden for me even. But I, I, it's like God gave me a love for these people that I did not give for myself, and I'm different around them. I want to help them. There's the, where some anointing comes in, some calling that we can help people identify. Because I really believe God doesn't call us to do a thing. He calls us to a people. 
and the people determine what we do based on the needs they have. What do they need? That's what we do. And so when this whole cycle comes into its fullness, the fullness of time, this is a place where we have fullness. I describe fullness as uh, an internal state where we feel like we lack nothing. Whatever happens, we can handle it. Come what will, we're good. We don't have all the resources, it doesn't mean that. It's an internal state, it's not an external state. Whatever happens, I can handle it. And we can move forward with that. It's like a living, breathing, walking Psalm 23 internalized. That's what fullness is. And when I'm in my fullness, my life can be an offering to people. Because check it out, fullness comes in three different ways. The fullness of an experience, the fullness of a skill set, and the fullness of the spirit. And the fullness of an experience is, I went through this, I've walked through it, I'm on the other side, now I survived, I've looked back, I've gathered the wisdom, and I can offer it to you. I have a fullness of an experience, and it's just an offering. I'm not harping on you, trying to get you to do this. If you accept it or reject it, I'm okay with that. It's an open-handed offering to you. Fullness of a skill set is, in all of this, I learned how to do some things that are unique. They're natural to me, but they're unique to other people, and I can help you move the needle in your life with that. And then fullness of the, of the Spirit is that anointing there. That when I, I'm led to these kind of people, when I say things, they tend to listen. And even though I'm not exactly perfect and don't have all the answers, it just somehow clicks when I touch that little space. And we don't always live there, but there's, if you think, there's places where you've kind of touched this fullness of, man, that meeting just went awesome. Or I, didn't, I wasn't worried, I wasn't fearful or anything like that. And you know what, they didn't even do it, or maybe they did, but I was kind of in the zone in that meeting. We have those kind of spots where we touch this area of fullness. This is what we're all after in one way or another. If you look at the marketing of any great company, they market to fullness. For example, Apple isn't, when they started, it wasn't just we have the best technology, it was think differently. That was their thing. There was their fullness for their people. Ford F-150, if you want to be a man, you're rugged, man, get this F-150 quad cab, you can get dirty and muddy, and then there's dudes who buy it in the city and they never even use it, right? It's fullness, be a man. And then uh, Dove Soap, it's not all the things we have that makes our soap better, we just pick this otter up out of an oil patch and we clean them up and now the otter's frolicking through the little this pond over here, right? It's fullness. What we're all after, what we all want, every company markets to it. And as we can identify this in our own life, our, when we live in fullness for ourselves, we can help other people get into it for their own. Um, and that's the concept that we call cycle of fullness.